say it's Pete, somewhere north of Las Vegas. Anyway, I uh, put together an AR. I've already done a, a couple of videos on it. I did an unboxing on the upper. I did an unboxing of the scope that I was going to put on it. And I did another video of mounting some of the accessories and, and having some trouble with uh, the bipod mount. But anyway, I finally got a chance to get it out here. And uh, the rain finally quit and the wind finally quit. So uh, I got it out here to, to test it out. So, basically an Aero Precision upper with an Atlas uh, S handguard. It's got an Anderson lower. CMMG trigger and trigger groups parts, uh, the Magpul Pro iron sights. I put a Sig Sauer Tango Tango 4 on it, 1x4 power, 24 millimeter uh, illuminated. It's got the horseshoe uh, 556 762 reticle. And it's got the uh, ballistic advantage barrel that that Aero Precision uses, and it's a wild chambering, one and eight twist. So, uh, what I did today was, um, I used one of these targets. Um, what you do is you set this target out at, at 10 yards. And what you do is you want your, you want your optics or your iron sights point of aim up here in this dark circle. And then you want your actual point of impact down here. Now this isn't the target I was using at 10 yards. I, I backed this up to 50 yards once I got it zeroed in. And I'll show you the other targets here in just a second. But from here to here is 1.9 inches. And what that does is once you get your, your uh, point of aim. Uh, just let me show you on a regular target. I don't want to get anybody confused. Okay. So here's what I did at 10 yards with iron sights. Now, once you get your aim in here and you start hitting right here, which like I said is 1.9 inches, now you are zeroed for 50 yards and 200 yards. And you are shooting at 10 yards. So the difference between a 50, 200 yard zero and a 100 yard zero it's about a tenth of an inch. So this isn't like an exact science, but this will definitely get you on paper at 50 yards once you've got sighted in at 10 yards. So this is what I did with iron sights. Um, these are my first couple of shots. I kept making adjustments and making adjustments and walked it in. And then when I got pretty close to where I needed to be, I, I called it a day. My eyes are all dorked up anyway, so I if I can shoot anywhere close to where I need to be with uh, iron sights, I'm doing good. So anyway, here's um, with the scope. So that was my first shot with the scope. And then I started making some corrections and got it pretty close. Now, two of these were at four power and one of them was at one power. So they all basically made uh, almost one hole at, at 10 yards. So now my scope is also sighted in for a 50 200 yard zero shooting at 10 yards. Same thing 1.9 inches. So I finally took one of these targets and backed it up to 50 yards to see how well this 10 yard zero worked. And that's what I got. So these first two shots here were just using the bipod with the uh, buttstock on my shoulder. And I could tell when I was pulling the trigger, right when it was getting ready to break, that the dot had just slightly moved off, off my point of aim. So I put a bag on, on behind the buttstock, and that's what I started doing at 50 yards. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is a one MOA rifle, maybe even better. So I'm just really happy with how it performed. Really happy. And the scope, like I said, I did a little testing uh, going back and forth between one and four power to see if the bullet impact would, would shift, and it didn't. So no complaints on the scope. Um, the horseshoe dot, the uh, bullet drop compensation, I'll, maybe I'll test that out at a later date or do a box test on it. But this was just more of a, 
a function check today and just got to get an idea of how how accurate the rifle was going to be. Anyway, like I said, I'm really happy with these guys. Anyway, Pete in North Las Vegas, over and out. Oh, I did forget to mention one thing. Um, as the brass comes out of the new rifle, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's a little tiny ding right there. In the first round it came out, I inspected it. Second round, same thing. At first I thought maybe it was just hitting a little rock and, and getting a ding, because it is pretty rocky out here. But they all have that exact same little tiny ding. I mean, it's, it's just barely there. So I don't know if it's a wild chambering issue in this particular ammo or maybe it's slightly over or under gassed. I don't know. It seemed to be sh ejecting at about 4 o'clock. So, I mean, that's not too bad. Uh, primer strikes are pretty much in the center. So other than that ding, the rifle performed flawlessly. No hiccups at all. No failure to feed, no failure to extract, no jam ups. Every time I pulled the trigger, it went. All right, now it's over and out. Later, Pete North Lost.